Welcome to Faith Talk with Anita. Thank you for joining me on the journey. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. And thank you for being a partner in my faith ministry. If my faith talks are helpful for you, please share them with others. Together, we can spread the good news. Last week, I shared Ilya Delio's article from Father Richard Rohr's Daily Meditation. There were two major points that she made in that article that really intrigued me. The first, which I shared last week, was the notion of Jesus as a whole maker. When we're broken, Jesus is there to make us whole again. That's a very powerful, life-changing message that we all need to remember. The second point that caught my attention was her notion about why Jesus is a whole maker. That's what I want to share with you today. Now, as I said last week, I'm still processing this whole message. So what you're hearing is really just me thinking out loud. But I hope it's helpful for you and gives you some theological food for thought. Delio believes Jesus is a whole maker. Because of his complete unity or oneness with the Father. She reminds us that in chapter 10 of John's Gospel, Jesus said, The Father and I are one. Now, it's very easy for me to understand and believe that Jesus is one with the Father. I don't doubt it for a second, because it's what I've been taught all my life. God is Trinity, one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. So, of course, Jesus, being the second person of the Holy Trinity, is one with the Father. According to Delio, Jesus came into the world to make whole what has been shattered and broken by the actions of humans. Through our free will, we humans have made a mess of the world God created for us. But God, in God's love and mercy, allows us to keep going doing as we will, which is why we need Jesus, the whole maker. Delio tells us this, quote, Jesus's intimate experience of God and his self-identity with the Father empower him to act in the name of love by healing and reconciling all that is unloved in human persons. He gathers what is scattered, healing the sick, eating with sinners, speaking with women, dining with tax collectors and Gentiles, dealing with each person as one called into greater wholeness. End quote. Delio suggests that Jesus is the whole maker because he is one with the Father. That makes total sense to my Christian mind and heart. But as I read Delio's words, I experienced an epiphany. A light went on for me and I felt as if I was finally able to see clearly. Now, I'm not sure that what I took from her message is necessarily what she intended to be taken, but her words brought me to a new awareness, to be sure. As I read her words, I began to realize 
that not only is Jesus one with the Father, but so am I, and so are you, and so is all creation. We are one with the Father, just as Jesus is. That's what I'm trying to work through right now. Not that I will be one with the Father someday in the fullness of time when I get to heaven, but I am one with the Father as Jesus is right now. Is that crazy? Or am I finally coming to the simple truth of life? I've always believed that I am personally connected with God through an intimate relationship. But I'm not sure I always knew myself to be one with the Father as Jesus is. That's the part that gives me pause. Can I really be one with the Father as Jesus is? Now, as I said, I'm still working through it all in my mind, but I have a feeling that I'm on the right track. You may already be at this place in your faith, and you're saying, yeah, I get that. Or perhaps you're saying, no way. I can't be one with the Father in the same way Jesus is, because Jesus is God. Before my epiphany moment I had this week, I was probably with you. But that has changed, to be sure. Here's my thinking. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus is the Word of God. And it was through this Word of God that all of creation was brought into being. Jesus' words create life cause change, make it so. When Jesus speaks, his words become reality. Now, at the end of his life, Jesus prayed this, quote, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, And I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. End quote. That's a lot of oneness. Now, these are the words of the second person of the Holy Trinity to the first person of the Holy Trinity. Jesus wasn't just praying in hopes that the Father would hear his prayer and answer him, like we so often do. No, this was a conversation between the Son and the Father, the first and second persons of the Trinity. So, when Jesus, the Word of God, prayed those words, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, that they may be one, as we are one, I in them, and you in me, it became reality. The mere fact that Jesus said we are all one, as Jesus and the Father are one, makes it so. Okay, so we are one with the Father, as Jesus is, right now. We don't have to wait until we die and go to heaven for that to happen. It's our truth right now, this minute. That is a powerful statement to make. The key, it seems to me, is believing it to the depths of our souls. That's when everything begins to change. Now, listen, 
I'm not saying I am God. Let me repeat that to make the point. I am not saying that I am God. Nothing could be further from the truth. But I am saying I am one with God. How could I not be? God is in us all. All of creation is one with God. If we were not one with God, would we not cease to be? It seems to me that any separation we do have from God is surely of our own making. But even if we choose to separate ourselves from God, I'm not sure it really happens. I think that is ultimately up to God, not us. We can choose to separate from God, and we can believe we are separated from God. But does that actually make it so? After all, I don't believe God wants separation from any of us. We are all God's precious children. My friends, if we can fully believe that we are one with God and live accordingly, it will transform our lives. It will empower us to live our lives to our utmost potential. When we truly believe it in our minds and our hearts, and when our actions follow suit, we will be unstoppable. Not to mention, I think, more peaceful, calm, and loving. Sadly, most of us don't fully believe that truth, or at least we don't fully live it. We continue to try to tr trudge through the muck of this world alone, which means we're not living our lives to the fullest, as God intended us to do, which is precisely why we need Jesus the whole maker in the first place. And I'm finding believing we are one with God is far easier than living it. Now, there are people who have been able to live that truth. People who knew with all their hearts that they were indeed one with the Father and all of creation, and that nothing could separate them from God. Mystics like St. Francis and St. Clair of Assisi, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Hildegard of Bingen, St. Mechted of Magdeburg, and Julian of Norwich, to name just a few. In my opinion, these are the people who should be our role models. When we look at how they lived their lives and listen to their words, we realize they were living on a whole different level than most of us. It's as if they had already passed over into heaven on earth. But they were just humans like us, no different from you or I, which means we can do the same. We can be just like them. Let me share a few quotes from some of these remarkable saints. First, the words of the remarkable Hildegard of Bingen. Every creature is a glittering, glistening mirror of divinity. All living creatures are sparks from the radiation of God's brilliance, emerging from God like the rays of the sun. Oh my, don't you love that? Here are the very poetic words of Mechted of Magdeburg. The day of my spiritual awakening was the day I saw and knew I saw 
all things in God, and God in all things. A light of utmost splendor glows on the eyes of my soul. Therein have I seen the inexpressible ordering of all things and recognized God's unspeakable glory, that incomprehensible wonder, the tender caress between God and the soul the unmingled joy of union, the living love of eternity as it now is and evermore shall be. Lord, you are my lover, my longing, my flowing stream, my sun, and I am your reflection. beautiful words. And finally, the words of the amazing Julian of Norwich. It is easier for us to get to know God than to know our own soul. God is nearer to us than our soul, for he is the ground in which it stands. So if we want to know our own soul and enjoy its fellowship, it is necessary to seek it in our Lord God. For as the body is clad in the cloth, and the flesh in the skin, and the bones in the flesh, and the heart in the whole, so are we soul and body, clad in the goodness of God and enclosed. Wow, I love that. Isn't that beautiful? You can just tell that they knew God intimately and they could see and feel the kingdom in its fullness during their lives on earth earth. They didn't need to wait to get to heaven to be fully one with God. They lived it in the here and now. Don't you want to be just like them? To have that knowing? I do. And I believe we can. My friends, I believe to the depths of my soul that we are one with God, as Jesus is, right now in this life here on earth. We don't need to wait for the next life to have that perfect unity with God. All we need to do is believe it and live it. But as I said, that's easier said than done. It will take our full and complete devotion and commitment. We can't just want it and then expect it to happen. No, the mystics who experienced this perfect unity with God made God the center of their lives, their absolute soul focus in everything they did. I know most of us will probably never reach that mystical place in this life. We are physical beings living in a physical world. We have families, jobs, and other responsibilities which take much of our attention, focus, and energy. But we can at least make it a priority in our lives and do our best. We can remind ourselves each day that we are indeed one with God. We can take time each day to pray, to read scripture, to sit and be with God. Simply doing that will be a good start on that holy journey towards full and total 
union with the Father. I vow to begin that journey today. I hope you will join me. It's who we are and what God desires for us. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Now, before I bring this faith talk to an end, let me take it one step further. If we are one with the Father, as Jesus is, then we must also be whole makers, as Jesus is. We must do our best to help the people around us feel fully included, to help them live their life to their fullest potential, to help heal their woundedness and bring them back to wholeness. Earlier, I shared with you Delio's words about Jesus as the whole maker. Let me repeat her words, but I'll insert us where she said Jesus. I invite you to listen carefully and believe in your heart that this is your true calling in life. Quote, Our intimate experience of God and our self-identity with the Father empower us to act in the name of love by healing and reconciling all that is unloved in human persons. We must gather what is scattered, dealing with each person as one called into greater wholeness. End quote. Let us pray. Creator God, we desire only to be one with you. Help us to give our lives wholly to you. And may our precious union with you transform our lives and the lives of those around us for the good of our world. Amen. I hope this faith talk was helpful for you. Please share this with others and join me for my next faith talk. Until then, I will be praying for you. May God bless you.